In my last video I made a few V10 engines and tried to improve their performance. Since then I have made a lot more engines. And in this video I will show you what has improved on these engines and how some of these engines operate. All of these engines in my last video were made using Tinkercad, which made it take a lot of time to develop them. Luckily, I got access to SolidWorks when I started my study of mechanical engineering, allowing me to make more complicated designs. The first engine I made was obviously a V10. It was a little more advanced, using one camshaft instead of two, and the block was also better designed, so the assembly took less time. It was able to rev up to 5000 RPM at around 4 to 5 bars of pressure. After the V10, I made a V12 engine that used bevel gears to drive the camshaft. Something I totally didn't copy from this German engine. The new drivetrain allowed the engine to have overhead cams. However, this engine was not very efficient or powerful to say the least, because it leaked everywhere. It also revved to around 2000 RPMs at 4 bars, which is an awful performance. As it turns out, copying an aircraft engine is not the greatest idea for making in a rev high. Who could have guessed? After the V12 I made an inline 3 that used regular gears instead of the old drivetrain. I made sure that the tube from the valve to the expansion chamber was as short as possible. This was to minimize a loss of pressure when the air expands, allowing it to push harder on the piston. The engine was also equipped with counterweights in the hope of making it more balanced. I also added some oil channels to the engine to lubricate it while it was running. I made two of these engines, one to test the entire system and one with minor improvements to raise the RPM. The first engine could rev up to 6300 RPM, which was a new record. I've not made a video on the second engine on my channel, but it was capable of revving up to 8000 RPM. These engines were not perfect however. They failed frequently and I had to tweak both of them a lot to make them run properly. After having optimized the inline 3, I wanted to make another V10 of course. This V10 used the exact same design as the inline 3, but compared to the other V10s, it had a crankshaft with the same angles as an F1 car. I tried using a manifold that reached for every valve on this engine, but it leaked like crazy, so I made two separate manifolds and connected them with a wide clip. The engine sounds quite impressive, but due to a lot of leaks and poor build quality, it only revved to a little bit over 5000 RPM. After the V10 I decided to go on a little side quest and I made this little steam engine, which could run at very low pressure. It was very small, but like most of my engines it lacked any real power. So with my next engine I made it my goal to make it some more torque. The new engine was a simple one cylinder. The cylinder was made of PVC instead of the regular 3D printed plastic and the piston had an o-ring to create a seal. This did not make it perfectly airtight but it improved a lot. Whereas previous engines were leaking a lot of air past the piston. The engine was also equipped with an exhaust valve because previously I was using exhaust ports which are a little less efficient. In this clip you can hear the engine misfiring, that's because the exhaust valve didn't have a spring at first. In this clip it does have a spring, bringing a very noticeable improvement. After this engine I really made my masterpiece. 
a single cylinder engine that is functionally identical to the previous engine but at a far smaller scale with of course some tweaks to the dimensions. This was my first engine with bearings and I made three iterations to this engine to perfect it and make sure it was reliable. The engine revved up to 11,000 RPM and did it so reliably. At the filming of this video I've ran the engine countless times and it has still not failed. One thing I found out was that the crankcase ventilation plays a very big role when you reach these high RPMs. I made an inline 4 on this engine's concept and I was planning to make a separate video on it but it ran very poorly due to the lack of build quality and eventually I gave up on it. Lately I have lost my interest in air engines. I no longer have the enthusiasm I had when I started with these projects, so I think it's time to move on. What you are seeing on the screen is my next project I've been working on. It's a small car I've built, but it already drives and I have a lot more planned for it. So stay tuned for next year when I have this project finished.